Brian, um, let's say you kind of touched on this and Josh touched on it too. Um, just in general, the conditioning level of, of everybody right now, where, where is that in relation to maybe where it would be in a, in a normal off season? And how much do you think that that has had an effect, especially maybe on the defensive end? Yeah, I think it's definitely a, a factor. Um, you know, it's part of what preseason's for. And, um, you know, in, in a normal off season, you get the month of September, you know, once Labor Day hits, you know, guys know it's, it's time to be in town. And those are informal, uh, voluntary workouts, but guys are able to play up and down, you know, as it's player run uh, uh, games and scrimmages. Um, so that naturally gets you into basketball shape. And, you know, that's, that's one of the unique things, I think, you know, especially with basketball is that, you know, you can do all the running and, and all the, the, you know, extra conditioning you want, but until you're in, in a basketball game setting, it's just a different type of environment, the stop and go um, you know, I think we saw last night with our group too, um, you know, when, when we get tired, sometimes the, the mental mistakes come too. And, uh, that's something that over the next nine days, um, you know, we, we, we have to speed up that process eight days. We have to speed up that process for our group. So we're ready for opening night. So I'm just going to have to gradually oh, kind of play into as well. Sorry, Aaron. Uh, I'm sorry. Say it one more time, Chris. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Is that something that they're just going to also just have to gradually play into as the season gets going as well? Yeah, I mean, I mean, unfortunately, you know, you don't want to say yes, but, um, you know, you, you do have to play your way into it. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll adjust. Uh, we'll be adaptable, you know, especially over these this next week here um, on, you know, how we change into adding more, even more scrimmaging, you know, into our practices, how we, how we adjust uh, in that sense. John, go ahead. A uh, couple for you here, Ryan. First of all, just kind of building off of that, how do you kind of strike a line as a coach in terms of wanting these guys to work hard and practice and get that wind up and stuff, but also needing to preserve legs a little bit as as everyone's getting back to and making sure they're fresh for games as well? Yeah, uh, it is a fine line. And um, that's one of the reasons we have talented people uh, in this league and, and in our organization when it comes to sports science and um, our medical group. Uh, I listen to a lot of what they they say. Um, we have good dialogue. Um, I trust what they say, um, but it's not it's not all based on you know just a number. Um, a lot of times it's it's based on uh, you know what what type of, of mental you know uh, overload you know uh, uh, individual may be may be taking on, and uh, we try to adjust accordingly when it comes to that because um, availability is really, really important as we move forward and we'll continue to adjust. And when you look at um, kind of the, the areas that you're trying to address now in these days leading up into your, to your first game, do you think it is, is more of the slippage and things that you've seen, is that just a team trying to figure out how to play with each other? Are they, or are there just kind of mistakes and things that can be corrected kind of on the quicker timeline that maybe have less to do with with chemistry and maybe more to do with just pure execution on things? I do think it's a little bit of both. And, uh, you know, we said from day one, COVID is a shared responsibility. Um, so is, is improvement. It's a shared responsibility for all of us with, within this organization. So, um, you know, it's not just on saying the players need to, you know, build chemistry. It's on, it's on all of us. And, uh, you know, that comes into execution. Uh, that comes into how we speed up that process. Maybe we, we try some different things in terms of how, how we can uh, speed up, I guess, the, the understanding of what we want to do um, because it is, it's such a unique year and uh, you know, there's, there's no manual to it. So uh, you find your sweet spot and, and you try to stay on that path and, and we'll find it. Jason, then Dane, Jace, go ahead. Brian, you talked last night, um, about finding different buttons to push in terms of like energy. Uh, I'm wondering if, is that have anything to do with like rotations and maybe guys who haven't gotten in until the second half of games who've performed well, um, might we see them maybe earlier in the game, like, like Thursday? Yeah, you could, um, you know, Thursday's our last preseason game too. And, uh, you know, you, you want to, you want to get, try to do your best to get guys comfortable with who they're going to be playing with. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll look at all different scenarios and options over the next couple of days, um, and and come up with what we feel uh, is 
is the best, you know, the best route to go because, you know, ultimately um, we just, we want to be ready for Detroit uh, on game, in game one. And that's what every, every day that we're building, it's to get ready for the regular season. And, you know, we're, every time we go out there, we want to compete and win, but we also want to want to do it the right way and, and make sure that we are getting better. And, um, you know, we, we didn't get a whole lot better last night and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get better today. Uh, last question, Dane, go ahead. Ryan Dallas on Thursday. And I'm just kind of curious thinking, thinking about that team and what Carlisle did last season with Luca and Chris Stapps. I'm wondering if you've um, drawn anything from, from what that pairing did. It was their first, their first season together becoming the top offense in the league. Yeah. Um, what connections you can make from that to, to Kat and Delo? Yeah, there are a number of connections. I mean, that's, but you know, that's uh, their, their, their connections in terms of, you know, a dynamic uh, playmaker as well as the bay who can shoot from the outside too. And, and you look at, you know, there's, there's other tandems in the league that, that have, you know, the same type of pick and roll action, um, you know, guys who can do multiple things, but um, Hey, those two guys are a handful in Dallas. And uh, you know, you, you try to draw concepts, you try to take a look at maybe what, what they're um, they've been successful with and, and how they were able to speed up that, that process. Cause um, you know, every, everybody, everybody has a different opinion on, you know, big guys when they are, do have the ability to shoot 40%, you know, from the, the field, you know, sometimes you'll have guys say, Hey, they, they still need to be inside, side the whole game. Um, but I think, you know, coach Carlisle uh, in Dallas, they did an unbelievable job balancing that. 